Yeah, it's almost been a week since I've done one of these. All right, lesson 2.1.3, taking notes. So we are talking about, so finishing up this chapter, we're talking about viruses and the world, viruses and the world. So we're gonna be talking about how viruses, they affect the world. Wait, does coronavirus have a color? Like when you're looking at it under a microscope. I don't know. So if you have your Bible with you, open it up to Romans 8, 18 through 21. Since you probably don't have your Bible, I also have it up here on the board. I also have it up here on the board because I assume that most of you wouldn't have your Bible because it's probably in your locker. So, no, you don't have to write this part down. I'll tell you when you can write it down. So, Romans 8, 18 through 21. So, three verses here. Can someone read this that they can't, who can actually see it? Yeah, William, go ahead. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits with eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that a, the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. <sighs> All right. After hearing that or reading that, what what does that mean? What is the, these three verses? What does that mean? How do you guys interpret that? I know you guys know how to interpret verses because you guys are taking Bible classes. What does this mean? You can look at any verse in there. You don't have to summarize the entire thing. What does even just a chunk of it mean? Yeah, Madeline? Children. Okay. So us. Um, um, so more people you teach, the better, more people know about God. Yeah, the more people you tell about the good news of, of God and Jesus, the more it's going to spread. Hey, that kind of sounds like a virus, right? So what do these, what do these mean to us? Although viruses cause suffering right now, those who are with God should not fear anything else of the world because God is greater than all things. So that's the main connection right there. Yeah, Caleb? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll tell you when. Okay, right here. Now you can write it down. Now I want you to start writing it down. You didn't have to write down the Bible part. I just wanted to have a connection to what you're doing and plus that's another thing you're not going to get at a at the public school so i like to throw that in there okay yeah. would the world be a better place without viruses would the world be a better place without viruses write your answer down i have an answer for both yes and no in here and if you can try and come up with an answer for yes or no Would the world be a better place without viruses? For the argument of yes, would the, better, would the world be a better place without viruses? Who came up with an argument for yes, it would be better? Yeah, William? Yes, yes! <laughs> Yeah, it's because there wouldn't be any quarantine, there wouldn't be as much anxiety, more depression. Yep, no anxiety, no depression, no struggling. Yeah, getting the school work done. You wouldn't have to get sick. Yeah, yeah, not is not and not um, one fifth of the population wouldn't be dead. Yeah, those are all good arguments. So, how about for no, the world would not be a better place without viruses, Madeline? People, it sounds really bad to say it, but people need to die from viruses. I mean, yeah. there would be too many people in this world if that, people didn't die. Yeah. So the argument of population <laughs> control? <laughs> Ellen? <laughs> All right, well, let's move on from that one. <laughs> it's, it's a thought. <laughs> Ellen? Provides jobs, yeah. Working in medicine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Aries, what do you have for the argument of no? So what about the, a world without bacteria? Let's think about it like that. Bacteria is pretty important. I know. So if you're eliminating viruses, that means you're eliminating bacteria. What what happens if you eliminate bacteria, Madeline? Our body is not made to not live in to not have that bacteria. Our body is made to kill things. Would our world survive without if we had no bacteria? Ian? No, because God created bacteria for a reason. He created everything for a reason. So what does bacteria do for our world? Aries? Well, it keeps them both the time. It gives them energy. It helps you eat. If you didn't have bacteria, you would literally eat yourself. But I mean, you wouldn't literally eat yourself, but we wouldn't even have oxygen to breathe. We wouldn't have a world where we could function. So, if you're if you're getting rid of all bacteria in general, and all viruses, that eliminates literally everything. So like Ian was saying, God made bacteria, God might made viruses for a reason. I'm not exactly sure why virus, how we could just eliminate just the bad part about bacteria, which is viruses. I don't know how we could do that. But if we were to figure that out, that's one of my questions I have when I go to heaven one day. Why is there viruses? Why do we have this? Honestly, I don't know. argument with the side. Here's the answer that we have here. Yes and no. Viruses cause so much suffering and relatively no good. Future scientific discoveries may reveal some benefits of viruses. So that's an inter interesting thought right there that I really like that when I was reading through our textbook. Future scientific discoveries may reveal that some benefits, that there may be some benefits of viruses one day. That's an interesting thought, right? So maybe a hundred years from now, from now, what are people going to be? What are kids who are going to be sitting in your seats when we're all dead? Hundred years from now, what are they going to be studying about coronavirus? Maybe they're going to see some good things that have come out of it. There, there will be probably another disease that they'll be going through as well. So they'll be studying the coronavirus, what like we have kind of studied like the Spanish flu, hundred years ago. All right, I'm going to move on because I've spent a lot of time on this one. Okay. All right. Hey, this was supposed to be animated. What is that? Looks like a frog hopping through a human body. Yeah. Okay, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be a GIF, a GIF, whatever you want to call it. This is supposed to be the um, bacteria or virus that once you, absorb it through the air particles, it'll go into your lungs, which causes difficulties with your lungs. And then if you ever cough, it's going to spew out of your mouth and you're going to spread it to someone else. That's what this is supposed to do. The red stuff will go into your yellow lungs, which your, yellow, your lungs are not yellow, by the way. And then you will cough. Like when you hear someone cough, that's why you're told to cover your mouth because there's particles, water follicles that come out. So if you cough in your elbow, Everyone, <laughs> not <laughs> always cough in your elbow. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the dab cough. No, I can't believe I didn't say that. All right, so diseases that viruses cause, diseases that viruses cause. So, viruses they are going to affect bacteria, so it can affect. As you can see, anything that's living, so bacteria, plants, and animals, viruses are spread through water droplets in the air, kind of like what I was saying. So when you cough, it is spread through particles that are in the air, and that's why we're told to cover our mouth when we cough or sneeze. It can be infected um, through food or a drink. That's why when you go to a restaurant, you have to be wearing gloves when you're preparing food because when you are just going about your day, you're touching things. And as you're touching things, you need to have a pair of gloves on to protect both yourself and the food from transferring from you to the food. Yeah, Ellen? I think the coronavirus really started, but it's like every time I see 
Right. Like really it's definitely. It's definitely affected us in every way. Yep. So, another way that viruses can be spread is through mosquitoes. So through an insect. So that's why. Yep. Malaria. So if you ever get um, um, bitten by a mosquito, you can get, for example, malaria or other types of illnesses can still be carried through mosquitoes. Put off, buddy. Out of the hood. And then through blood and then touch and intercourse. Jurassic Park gives us an example. Yes. Um, isn't it true that mosquitoes, when they, um, when someone has coronavirus, they take your blood? Can't they tra transmit it to another person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, coronavirus is spread through all of these different types then, of methods. Um, the reason they tell you to cover their sneeze is because if you sneeze, if you sneeze, it travels at a high rate of power. It does, yeah. Right, right, yep. it's, 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 it's it travels with, high. yep. Because your hand is going. <laughs> yep, that's one reason for the six feet apart. Yep. So, diseases, they affect bacteria, plants, and animals. And then... The ways that they are spread are these five different methods down right there. My animation, it's supposed to be moving. It's supposed to be a GIF, but for some reason, I must have done it, done it wrong. It's like an older X-ray vision of Caillou, but with the wings. No, I didn't actually make it. I just inserted it from this GIF maker that people make their own GIFs, and I take it and I put it in my PowerPoints. They probably will, but it's okay. I have a bunch of other gifts that are in all my PowerPoints. Do they work that shit? I don't know. Maybe maybe they're not working anymore. All right. So that is this slide. Okay. Oh yeah. See, this one works. So as Ellen was saying, hugs. They're kind of scarring us. <laughs> we see people hugging. And we're like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> so diseases that viruses cause. So these are a big list of um, viruses that virus. These are a big list of diseases that viruses do cause. So we have influenza, we got AIDS, yellow fever, chicken pox, the common cold, polio, hepatitis, rabies, and there's a lot more. There's a lot more, but I just couldn't fit any more. Yeah, Madeline. Yeah, yep. Because I'm going to give, I will list some uh, diseases at some point that are not caused by viruses. But I'm only going to be testing you on these ones. So I'll list all of those ones, and there will be one, let's say, on a multiple choice test that'll say which one of these diseases is not caused by a virus. I'll list three of these. So maybe it'll say influenza, AIDS, yellow fever, and then it'll say one that is not caused. Yes, Aries. Did you? Nice. Yeah, William. Um, I don't ever really understand why people are exaggerating the coronavirus. We've lost more babies by abortion. There's arguments for that, but we're not. I'm not going to get into that. We, we won't we won't in my class for um viruses because it's too fresh of a thing and it would end up i can see people hurting or attacking other people so we won't do it for viruses but for something else yeah that was me we did the great debate about that was interesting. Uh, that, was, that was fun. I love the debate. I love the great debate. A fly landed on his head. That was amazing. A video of it. Yeah. Okay. I think this is yeah. This is my last slide. This is my last slide, guys, and then you can move on and work on your homework. So let's cruise through this. I'm gonna shrink shrink my face down so I can see. So how do vaccines work? Oh, this gift didn't work either. I think it's because you're also doing college. My last gift worked. Why didn't this one work? Like, maybe there's a virus. There's a <laughs> virus on my computer. It's not moving. Open in a new tab. He's going to show us. 
gonna unplug this real quick because I, I really like this GIF. Oh no, I'm not. Okay, so how vaccines work. So I'm, I found one with dots instead of with a bunch of people this time. So when one person is just getting vaccinated, or I guess two people, so if two people get vaccinated, it says not vaccinated. I like the other one better. So these are these green dots. So the green dots, they are not, like not vaccinated, but they are healthy. And then the blue dots, they are vaccinated and healthy. So the red dots, they are all the not vaccinated and sick people. So as you can see, a lot of these people, they're not vaccinated and all healthy. The blue people, they are healthy and they are vaccinated. Blue people, they are all good. They're all good. So if you get the flu shot, for example. So when you when only two people get the shot, it's still going to spread. And that's kind of be kind of gonna be the still still the same thing if not everyone gets um, some kind of shot like the flu shot. So that's why it's really important to get the flu shot because if you don't, then you're gonna end up infecting other people. And that's kind of the same thing with coronavirus as well, which there's a lot of debate about that out there right now. Hola, Logan. So point number one, vaccines, they use weakened or killed viruses. Or, as we um, have also learned about, they are unactivated. They are unactivated uh, viruses. And they force the body to have an immune response without making uh, the person who is getting the shot sick. So when you get that shot, it is an unactivated or a killed virus, but it still can be activated once it is injected into the recipient. So vaccines, they cause the body to produce necessary antibodies to fight off the, to fight off the infection. So the good part about vaccines, ones that are known and have a lot of research behind them, the vaccines, they are causing the body to produce antibodies. So those antibodies are like the white blood cells. The white blood cells, they now have experience and they know how to fight off the illness. They know how to fight off the infection. They know what methods they can use to destroy them. I liked it better when it had the people. I kind of like this dot one as much. That's hard to understand. Yeah, the, the dot one is not as good as the people one. I like the people one better, but it still works. Some people get vaccinated. Most of the healthy people aren't vaccinated. It's just dots. Wait, so it's okay. I like it's white dots, yeah. So essentially, when you do get vaccinated, you are going to have, you're going to get the um, unactivated virus or the killed virus injected into you and your antibodies or your white blood cells, they are going to have experience and they are going to know how to fight off the virus when you do get it. When you get that vaccine, it's a killed virus or a unactivated weakened virus. Those are some different ways of so that, that you will prisoner. be seeing it. Basically a prisoner. Not exactly, no. Are being, the spies are being prisoners. Not exactly, no. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, spies that are, they are, their personal information is given out and you know who they're going to be. channel that Mr. Dillard. Yeah. Comparing viruses to. The brain is the key. Nope. Thank you, sir. The gesture should be the nervous system. All right. So that is it. You guys get this one all written down mostly? Those of you who are actually taking notes? I'm on the last part. Last part, okay. I'll give you a little bit more time. So that is all. So for homework today, um, in your workbook, you can you have the choice. You can either do worksheet 2.1.3a, and that is, I think it's the um, crossword. No, not crossword, it's like a word search. Let me, let me see what it is, I have it. Your, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Here we go. Wait, it's in your lab? Yeah, it's in your workbook, but I also copied them in here.
Can you get what? Yes. Yeah, you can. Yes. Yeah, if you guys need your lab book, go ahead and go get it. Okay, yeah. Oh, that did not come out right. So, yep. So here's what um, worksheet 2.1.3 is. I need to figure out how I can flip these. I haven't figured it out yet. So here's what 2.1.3 looks like. And then I have 2.1.1, which looks like, there we go, which looks like this. So it's about, it's virus research. If you want to, you can go home, research a virus, any virus. It could be the flu virus. It could be um, smallpox, chickenpox, anything, any virus. If you want to, it could be coronavirus. You would draw the virus, so drawing its structure, and then um, write, write at least five facts about the virus, including the type of organism it affects and what disease it causes. So five different facts. This one, this one would be a pretty cool one if you want to do this at home, but if you want to get your homework done now, then you can just get the, the word search done. Or you can do both of them. No, it looks like this one. It's called Viral Vocabulary Worksheet 2.1.3. Crossword, there we go. I always say it wrong. So if you get anything wrong, then you would, you would be able to get 100%. I didn't pick that one for a reason. 